Water is very important. It's a sustenance that mankind can't live without. The human body could only go three minutes without air, three days without water, three weeks without food. I don't know about you, but these threes just seem to be all over the place. And I don't ever want to be without water when it comes to my family. I want to always have access to clean, drinkable water. Now, I live in California, Sacramento Zone 9B. Now, California has no problem with the residents collecting rainwater. If I'm correct, you can collect rainwater in all states except for one that I'm aware of, and that's Oregon. Whatever their beef is with the residents collecting rainwater, I hope they straighten it out for the betterment of the people who reside there. But here in California, I use IBC totes to collect my rainwater in a backyard suburban garden. And I use it with various plumbing and PVC style piping. But I also collect water a little bit differently from others. In other words, I have plenty of water here that is for drinking, bathing, and cooking. And the water that comes out of here, I flush it, I filter it with charcoal canisters. Let me help you folks understand something really quick. Reverse osmosis, RO systems, are great for filtering pollutants and contaminants out of your water. We talk about everything, including pharmaceutical drugs, PFAs, which is forever chemicals, and many other contaminants, okay? Distilled water is also another process in which you can have good drinking water. The problem with both of these systems is that it's also going to filter out the needed minerals that our bodies need. How do you replace those back? Well, you replace them back by adding Himalayan or sea salt to your water. Usually a teaspoon to two teaspoons per gallon of water. I say a teaspoon should be enough. You can get those minerals back. But you wouldn't have to do that if you made sure your diet was adequate in nutrients. That's important. Your diet is, needs to be adequate in nutrients. If your diet is in balance, it doesn't matter how much sea salt or Himalayan salt you add you're going to have some malnutrition and some issues down the line. Now, we're going to get into something else. But before I do that, I'm going to share with you something else. If you want the best water filtration system that can filter all other contaminants, but leave you with the vital minerals that your body needs, you want to stick with a system that's going to contain charcoal filters. I love my charcoal filters. I've had them tested because I've tested my water several different times, before and after. City water, and once I run them through my filters. You can go up at UC Davis here in California, the Agriculture Department, and they'll test it for you. They don't charge you anything. Once you're an alumni of any of the universities in the area, hey, it's like the doors are open to you. Thank you, Father. So listen. Charcoal filters, I like the Alexa up here. We don't do Berkey here. I built a lot of Berkey systems for individuals, but I personally don't do Berkey. I've spoken about this long time ago before all the videos showed up on YouTube talking about Berkey systems are involved in lawsuits and they've lied. Well, let me say this really quick. The moment I found out, why can't we get Berkey units here in California? You literally got to go through the back door to get their systems. Some Amazon sellers will sell it to you. But Berkey refused to take California strictest water requirements, all the tests that are involved. It's not about money because Berkey is very popular and they have the money, but they refuse to go through California's water testing uh, requirements. And California have some of the strictest water uh, requirements throughout the entire USA. I'm thankful for that because it means that most of the residents are going to get somewhat uh, fallible water. Here's the problem though. The water still contains everything from chlorine to fluoride to arsenic to lead, things that have pharmaceutical drugs. We're talking about sex drugs, 
okay? Sex hormone drugs. It's got PFAs, forever chemical. You have other contaminants that are so bad in our water that I wouldn't want to drink them. I can only imagine what Flint, Michigan continues to go through to this day. Jackson, Mississippi, and I'm a native of Greenville, Mississippi. So I can only imagine what many um, states and cities are going through. The people are going through. But if you want the correct systems that's going to allow you to keep those minerals, stick with charcoal filters, okay? You can build a DIY system. I'll put it down on a link below. You can go over to my channel and watch how to build it, okay? These systems have been out for years on YouTube, but they were old videos. And when I came across them, I said, I want to make that system. So I didn't invent it, but I popularized it again on a platform of TikTok as well as YouTube. And it seems like everybody went, went for it. That's a great thing. The problem is my system is not made out of Berkey filters. It's made out of filters made by a company called My Patriots, and the filters are called Alexapure. And they've been tested. And trust me, you, I love their filters. I got cases of these filters because I wanted to ensure me, my family, and my children, and my children's children, just in case. If you don't think I got enough filters, then you don't know me well. When I buy, I buy in bulk. And if that means it's going to cost me a pretty penny, I'd rather spend a pretty penny and a good investment on something that's going to be uh, of, of some value to uh, my generations to come. And, you know, that's just the way it is. But you can also collect water if you don't have the money or the ability to create an elaborate system of all the PVC pipes and whatnot to collect your rainwater. Here, I have an overhang and then I have a, my main roof. So essentially, I have two roofs. My main roof has tile. So that water is easily collected and is drinkable once I filter it. But the water from this overhang here, well, I'll tell you something. It's made with asphalt tiles and that stuff is toxic. You don't want to consume it. But what I love about it, if you collect it in buckets or barrels, all this sediment of the asphalt and every other thing goes to the bottom. And the water, of course, you can collect it easy. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And I do this constantly because your container plants here, remember, if you feed them water, no matter how many filtration systems you have in your home, no matter how much good water you have in your home, if you come outdoors and you have this elaborate container garden, and you are feeding your container plants city water, you literally just negated the entire purpose of purchasing your filters. Because whatever you feed your trees, they're gonna absorb it. Your fruit are going to absorb it. Well, that didn't work out. And in return, you are gonna consume this fruit once again, consuming PFAs, pharmaceutical drugs, and all the contaminants that come with city water. I want to make sure my trees are healthy. And one of the things no one can ever tell me is that when you come to your garden after a rain, your garden looks alive and things are flourishing and it's just gorgeous. Same with out in nature. Well, what do you think happens to your containers? You need to water them. You'll notice your trees are healthier. They don't lose as many minerals. Easy. In fact, you're giving them more minerals. So we know that we fertilize on a monthly basis, but if you sit back and water your plants, you're giving them minerals over and over and over, especially when it's rainwater. That's the key, rainwater has plenty of minerals. Your trees are gonna look healthier. Your fruit is gonna taste better, and you're gonna have what they call nutrient-dense foods. In other words, I don't need 10 of these to replace one of these because my one has more nutrients in it than your 10 that you're allowing in city water um, in use to feed your plants. I hope this all makes sense to you folks. And I wanna help you folks understand things on a different level, if it makes sense. Let me show you really quick of another area that I actually collect water. Stay tuned. This gets so real, so real. 
Now, that's my overhang. Now you see I got my main roof, but this roof here, the overhang, has asphalt tiles on it, asphalt. But look really close here for a second. I can use this and take it all the way down if I wanted to. I can fixate this system and make it right with PVC pipe and do it the right way. But this is something simple. The rain comes down, it empties into this 45 gallon um, garbage can here. I have on two ends. So here's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna put a couple of barrels on this side, maybe even another 275 gallon IBC tote. And I'm gonna have that water come down it's gonna be collected. It's gonna come over here and go straight down into the IBC tote. It's quite simple to do. And it's not rocket science. Any structure you build on your property, if you folks own property, anything, I don't care if it's a chicken coop, I don't care if it's a warehouse, a garage, or some sort of tool shelter, if it has a roof, you should have at least minimally a 55 gallon next to it or an IBC tote collecting rainwater from whatever hit that roof. Depending on your square footage of your roof, you're only gonna be able to collect a certain amount of uh, rainwater. But regardless, you should be collecting it. Let me give you an example. How many of you got chicken coops? Are you collecting water from your chicken coop? Because if you're not, number one, you're feeding probably your chickens bad water, city water. I can guarantee you most of you are. But why not feed them rainwater, a lot of nutrients, a lot of minerals. Your chickens will be healthy, happy, healthier, and uh, hearty when it comes to their eggs. You folks be well. I hope this made sense. Shazam.